I came from a very traditional mindset. I went to school, I got a degree, like I was gonna be a businesswoman and all these things. And like when I was working those jobs and the corporate stuff, and I didn't feel free. So I will not stop. And whatever I do in this life, I wanna feel free doing it. The day that I made center, we were in Orlando, Florida. I had just came off of a freestyle run that was doing really well on social media. I was so excited that the music was getting a lot of attention, but with a lot of attention comes like, not everybody is going to fuck with you for real. Just as much love that I was getting, it was kind of my first time experiencing like negativity coming in on my music. So it was my first time kind of dealing with that, but I was feeling real cocky that night. And I was like, you know what? It don't matter what I wear. It don't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what I do. If enough people see it, somebody is going to say something about it. If I wear the top, Somebody gonna be like, why is she dressing like a boy? If I don't wear the top, they gonna be like, oh, you felt like you had to have your titties out for attention? And it's like, you know what? <laughs> I'm gonna just do whatever I wanna do and y'all can eat a dick. Don't fuck with me unless you ready for this problem. Mama always taught me, you don't start those, you solve them. Don't fuck with me unless you ready for this problem. Cause if you come over here messing around, like you gonna get it. So come on over here and try it. And my mom was very much so that way as well. There's been so many times in my life where I'm like, ooh, like this bitch, da 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 da. And my mom is like, don't take shit, don't harm shit. If that is not bothering us, we're not gonna do no harm to that. We're not gonna do no harm to nothing. But as soon as it starts affecting you and somebody comes in and they trying to like mess up your stuff, then it's like, okay, you gotta stand on business. Mink, mink, goblin, finish them, they wobbling. Okay, chill, they falling. Damn, sin, get off of. I feel like I got a lot of rhyme schemes from Lupe Fiasco. Lupe Fiasco once said, I turn to see my dream love supreme queen me to stand on the scene cry. And I remember being like, ooh, <laughs> like, this this nigga's nasty. Like, he does a really great job of rhyming each syllable almost to the next line while streaming together like a storyline. That's what attracts me to rap. If you can write a really good song, I'm listening to your stuff. When I'm writing, it's like I'm thinking of those types of things. Those like literary devices. I'm thinking about like how the cadence picks up. So like, meet, meet, goblin, finish on eight, wobbling. It was like, yeah, the timing of it. I tried to be kind of playful, but still, um, something that felt good to listen to. I'm a prophet. Don't take shit, won't harm shit. Can't take the play, don't you jump in this ball pit. The contradiction of the song being called Sinner and being like, yeah, but I'm a prophet though. It's like my journey means something. As many times as I may make a mistake, as many times as I may sin or whatever the case may be, like my journey is useful. If not to me, then to somebody else. Whether you're fucking up or not. Used to work at Harbor Freight, but now this my office. Can you believe they pay me all this money just to talk shit? I probably worked at Harbor Freight for like two months. I've worked a lot of jobs in my lifetime, a lot of retail jobs. I couldn't keep them because as soon as somebody did something that pissed me off, I would just be like, all right, I, this is my two weeks. <laughs> like, I could not stay in them jobs. I needed something that I didn't have to take so serious. So now I get paid to fucking rap. <laughs> like, when, like, <laughs> I don't know, this is not a serious ass job. So like, yeah, I used to work at Harbor Freight, but now I get to be on stage and I get to be doing Verified and I get to be, you know what I'm saying? That genius and stuff. This song is, I'm just talking shit the whole damn time. Little bitch, I'm vibing. Little bitch, we mobbing. All in God timing. Well, goddamn, I'm shining. On this record, this ain't silver ho, it's white gold weight. Till I get them diamonds, it's gonna be a choke hole, okay? Oh, wow. I had just gotten like my first little check and I was so scared to spend it. The biggest thing that I got was these uh, <laughs> these white gold grills. So I got like a, a bunch of little pieces of white gold teeth and I couldn't at the time afford the diamonds cause I wanted to do the whole like, yeah, I'm gonna get like the bunch down. No, I was like too scared to spend that much money on something. Also a lot of people on those freestyles kept being like, why does she rap like she has spit in her mouth? I was like, it's not spit, bitch, it's gold. This ain't silver. It's not silver, it's white gold, bitch. And wait until I get diamonds. I'm gonna have y'all in a choke hold. And the double entendre is that like, wait until these records go gold. Wait until they go platinum. Wait until, you know what I'm saying? Wait until I got, you know, these, these diamond records. Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna have everybody in a motherfucking choke hold. Like the grill. <laughs> I'm a 
Hoochie, I'm a sellout. Smell like shit every time it's me they talk about. Center was just me talking shit about like, I'm gonna do whatever I want because I'm that bitch and I'm the shit. And that's what's gonna happen. You can call me a hoochie. You could call me a sellout. You could call me, you know, prude. You can call me whatever. This battle that I have with authenticity, authenticity is always gonna win. So as long as it's coming out naturally, like that's what I'm gonna do. But it smells like shit every time it's me y'all talking about. So y'all talking shit because I am the shit. I'm a born center, better get that gone. 85 burning rubber till I get back home. And the concept of home is, you know, self-acceptance and being like, being able to hold grace for yourself. I'm trying my hardest to get back to a point where I feel content with who I am, however I look or however I sound or wherever I'm at. Like I wanna bring that comfort that I should have with myself anywhere. And bit it is the fruit that fell early, slither with these snakes on me, Lord have mercy. I know I'm gonna regret if I don't do this the true and right way. I'm gonna regret if my fall from grace is because I wasn't being true to myself. Bitter is the fruit that fell early. I will not be falling early. I'm gonna do this the way that I want and I'm not gonna let anybody tell me to do it different. So I'm gonna slither with these snakes on me and just like, Lord, grant me graces, like have mercy on me as I move through this while shaking off like all of these different um, opinions and negativity. Hands in his chicken, no churches, throwing up to purge it. Lord, forgive me for these urges. I keep talking about this battle of authenticity. Thoughts are thoughts and we have to choose which ones we hang on to and which ones we let go. There are times where I'm like, mm, that sounds too much like this. There's another part of me that's like, okay, but that came out naturally though. Or like, okay, but that's how I would say that. Okay, but you know, it's like, as long as it's authentic, then cool. This was like, yeah, my hands are in the pot now. Like no church is involved, my hands are in the pot. Lord forgive me for like even thinking about going against, you know, what I would do naturally or like walking true or being like true to myself or like true to my message that I came here with. So who the fuck I look like if I slow up now? I'll be damned if I go out there and embarrass myself cause I'm being shy. Who? You know what I'm saying? What? No, I'm not <laughs> like, the fear never leaves. The fear of like perception or the fear of failing or the fear of messing it up, like it never leaves. But if I step out into it, which I have, this year I've stepped out into it, I can't pull back now. Talking out they neck, but my foot calm that down. Used to let that slide just to keep folks around. Now I keep the scissors in my bag in case they get loud. We pipe that smoke down. A lot of things I used to like, I used to let them slide just because I didn't want to start no, no problems. But now, I'm real quick to cut a bitch off. Like, like, if somebody does some weird shit around me, like, you can go, because I know where I'm headed. So, like, that's cool. Go and do your thing. Just don't do it around over here. The double entendre, which I feel like goes over a lot of people's head, is like, you know when your homie got the fronto leaf, and they're always like, yo, you got scissors? When you was cutting up fronto leaves to smoke, I always used to keep a pair of scissors in my bag because I knew he was going to be cutting up fronto leaves. So, now I keep the scissors in my bag, not to just cut a bitch off, but in in case they get loud was like, in case they get weak. <laughs> and then we pipe that smoke down is also like, we'll smoke or whatever. <laughs> I don't even smoke no more. <laughs> don't get me rowdy. These hoes can't rap with me. Say that shit proudly. I think I'm fucking fire. So no, nobody can rap with me. Not even these niggas. Like, no, I'm, I'm hot shit. I'm sorry, but if you're a rapper, you don't think you're hot shit, like, What's going on there? You know what I'm saying? Like, you have to have some sort of ego to get through this shit. Like, nigga, I'm good at what I do. I'm great at what I do. And I say that shit with pride, because I believe it full, full, like full send, full beans. Bad, bad Mike Lowry, serving face and season. Bitch, I even brought my Lowry's. Bad boys, duh, Mike Lowry. He was a bad motherfucker, and so am I. Serving face and season. I'm bad, and I know what I'm doing. I'm seasoning this shit. Bitch, I even brought my Lowry's. Put a little sprinkle, a little Lowry on that motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? That's just another goofy ass bar. <laughs> They like my little voice. They think my shit's sweet. They think they gonna beat this little caramel coochie. Please. This bar is actually funny as hell. At Disney, we were walking around and there was a building there. It was a candy shop, but it was spelled out caramel with a K. And the second word was like K-U-C-H-E. And I was like, 
this is a kid's place and they got a, a building in here called Caramel Coochie. So the whole time we were like making fun of it, talking about Caramel Coochie. Like we were, we just kept saying it randomly throughout our trip. And so I literally only put this bar in there because I wanted to wrap it in the mic and see everybody in the studio fall out. Like I, I literally, for the sake of the joke, put this bar in there. It's another goofy ass bar. But yeah, they like my little voice. Everybody thinks my voice is so cute or whatever. They think my shit's sweet. They think they gonna beat this little caramel coochie. And sure enough, as soon as I said it, my managers in the room busted out laughing. And I was like, no, we keeping that in, and we keeping that in the song. <laughs> Caramel coochie. Well, bitch, I'm the new age Eve. Forbidden gems up my sleeve next to that 380. I'm the new age Eve. Obviously, the double entendre there is like paying homage to Eve, the rapper, who is incredible and I respect the hell out of like her music and her as a person, how she carried herself in rap music as well. She was hard and she could rap her ass off. And obviously it ties back to the Adam and Eve thing. We know the story of Adam and Eve. Like she was the one that told Adam to eat the fruit, which I think is a little biased, but it's fine. It's fine. Blame it on the women. Forbidden gems instead of forbidden fruit. Cause I'm trying to send messages in my music. I just said what I said. Bitch, I'm the new AG. Forbidden gems up my sleeve next to this 380. Here it is. Caramel coochie. Wow. Caramel coochie. Caramel coochie. <laughs> Inspiration behind the bar. Right? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh...